Hi everyone, welcome to our midweek online devotional. I hope you're all doing well at home. It's been almost two months now since the lockdown started. And really for all the things that are happening right now, for all the things that we are going through during this tough time season. You know what, thank God that we're still alive and strong, well and secure. And I believe it's all because of the grace of God. You see, His grace is sufficient for all of us. His grace sustains us and strengthens us in the midst of this crisis. And let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, in the midst of uncertainty, the Lord is our security. Amen? Because one thing is for sure, God is with us in every season of our life. And He will never leave us. He will never abandon us. He will never forsake us. And the God that we serve, amen, He is more than willing and able to help us in times of trouble. And so I want to encourage you, instead of worrying, why don't we pray and seek God and find out His will for our lives? The Lord, He remains good and faithful to us. Come on, God is still in control. And the Bible says that all things work together for good. You see, if you love the Lord and you know you are called according to His purpose, that will give you the confidence and the strength for you to face and overcome whatever challenges that may come your way. Amen? And let me tell you this, He knows what's happening around us. He is not blind to our situation. He loves us and He cares for us and He hears our prayer. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, this morning, I want to share a message that I've been meditating on for over a week now. And this is very strong in my heart. And I pray that not only we will discover what Jesus has done for us, but ultimately, you know, I pray that we will begin to discover more of who Jesus is in our life. Because the more we know Jesus, the more we will become secure and confident in our faith walk. Amen? But before we go straight into the Word, I want us to pray first. Amen? Can we do that? So let's close our eyes and let's pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather, Lord God, through the means of social media. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that you are good and you are faithful, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that as we listen to your word, I thank you, Lord God, that you will speak to us directly, Lord God, into our hearts, Lord God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will continue to reveal to us who Jesus is, what he has done and who we are in him. Lord, we love you and we commit the rest of the time that we have here. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So let's begin reading from the book of John. So if you have your Bible, open with me in the book of John, uh, in the book of John chapter 10, starting verse 7. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. So it says, it says here, Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the ship. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the ship did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And then in verse 11, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, but a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I'm known by my own, as the Father knows me. Even so, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, 
and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. That's powerful. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down for myself. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. Bless the reading of his word. You know, I believe that in, in this passage of the scripture, the word is comparing us to sheep. And Jesus used the analogy of, of his being the shepherd to actually show to us the uniqueness of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. To point us to something that will actually develop, strengthen, and deepen our relationship with God. You see, brothers and sisters, and those of you who are listening to the sound of my voice, I believe that the most important relationship that you and I have right now is our relationship with God. Do you hear that? The most important relationship that you have right now is your relationship with God. And out of that relationship that you have, that we have with God, comes out purpose, calling, and destiny. Amen? That's why if you put God first in everything, all other relationships that you have will become successful. Why? Why? Because God is at the center. Amen? He's the one reigning in your heart. And everything, and, and out of that, you know, good things will happen. Amen? You will become successful in every area of your life. I don't know about you, but I want my relationship with God to go to another level. Another level of intimacy and maturity. Another level of personal experience and personal encounter with, with the living God. You know, just like Moses, he doesn't just... He doesn't just see the power of God, the hand of God that performed miracles, signs, and wonders. But also Moses had a personal encounter with the great I Am. As he behold, you know, the, the, the glory of God. And, and I pray, and, and, and really I pray that in our life, in our journey with God, that we will not just witness the power of God manifesting, but we will also have a personal encounter with Him, with His presence. And I believe that as we spend time with the Lord, He will fill us with His Holy Spirit. And He will embrace us with His presence like never before. Amen. In fact, what's made available for us today is far greater than what's made available for them in the past. Why? Because we are, we are, we, why? Because, because now that we are in Christ, we have a full access into the presence of God. The Bible says we can come, we can come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and, and find grace to help us in times of need. Amen. Let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, we are in covenant with God and it is a new an everlasting covenant, a new covenant with a better promise. And so here in John chapter 10, you know, Jesus makes two statements about himself. And this is very powerful. You know, Jesus makes two statements about himself. First, he is the door. And the second one is he is the good shepherd, not just any shepherd, but he is a good shepherd. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it wonderful to know that Jesus is the door? He is the door of the he is the door of the sheep and if anyone enters by him, the Bible says, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. See, our salvation can only be found in the Lord and and our success in life is dependent on him. Jesus is the door. Amen. Thank God because of Jesus, we have access to God. Because of Jesus being our door, we have access to the presence of God. And we can enjoy the abundance of His grace. He is the door that will lead us 
to a green pasture. You know what this green pasture is? A green pasture is a place of abundance, a place of prosperity. It is a place where the shepherd would lead, would bring the sheep so that the sheep can eat and be, and be full and be refreshed. It is a place of unlimited supply of God's, unlimited supply of blessings. How do you want that in your life? I believe that God has a right place for you. Amen. How many of you are glad that every time the Lord leads us, He would always lead us to the right place? And I believe that God has a right place for you. And He is guiding you there. The question is, are you going to allow Him to lead you? Are you going to allow Him to guide you? You see, there is rest when you allow the Lord to lead you. Because He will only lead you to a place of happiness and joy to a place wherein you can enjoy everything that He has prepared, everything that He has in store for you. Amen. And also here, one thing that is important that, that, we, can, that we can see here is that the primary job of the ship, listen to this, it's very important. The primary job of the ship is to hear, to respond and to follow the shepherd. See, not only they hear his voice, but they respond and they follow him. Three things, brothers and sisters. They hear, they respond, and they follow. And we, like a ship, I believe we also need to hear, respond, and follow the Lord. Amen. We need to hear from God. You see, to hear means is to pay attention to what the Lord is saying to us. I believe every day the Lord is speaking to us. He's speaking to you. He is giving us instructions that are necessary to fulfill whatever it is that He wants us to do, His will for our lives. That's why every day we need to train ourselves to hear from God. Let me tell you this, you can hear from God. Why? Because we are sons and daughters of God. You know Him, you know His, you know His word. And you know that God is speaking to you. Even right now, I believe God is talking to you. God is speaking to you. And we need to be familiar with this voice. Because, you know, there's so many voices. So there's so many voices around us that will try to get our attention away from, from Him, away from the Lord. There is the voice of the world. There is the voice of your flesh, our flesh. There's the voice of our soul. There's the voice of, you know, your neighborhood, your neighbor. And then sometimes it distracts you. Amen? And that's why it, it is very important that we, we focus our ears in hearing the Lord. That's why my question is this. Whose voice are you listening to? Kasi kung sino yung lagi mong pinakikinggan, kapatid, that will determine your focus. That will determine your focus. Sometimes, we're having a hard time hearing the voice of God because we keep on entertaining other voices that are not necessary to the season that we are in. I pray that whatever season we are in, we can hear from God. And not just we can hear from God, but you know what? We can respond and obey to that voice. Amen? You see, there are many ways on, on how you know, we can hear from the Lord, how the Lord speaks to us. First is, God speaks to us through His Word. You see, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You see, His Word brings right doctrine. He will give us right doctrine. So we will not be deceived. So we will, so we will become rooted and grounded in truth. And, and if you are rooted and grounded in truth, you are unshakable. Amen. And that will solidify your faith, our faith. And we will not be easily shaken and tempted when the enemy come, comes, again, comes against us. Another, another way on how the Lord speak to us, he speak he speaks to us. He speaks to us through His Holy Spirit. 
It says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, it says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. You see, I, I, I love that, that the Holy Spirit convicts us. See, the, the, Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit will never condemn us. God will never condemn us. But He will convict, convict us. Why? So He can point us back to His Word. Because that's what we need. We need His Word. And if we have Word from the Lord, that will strengthen us. Amen? If we, have, if we receive a Word from the Lord, you know, that will solidify our faith. Amen? Hallelujah. And another, another, other, another thing, you know, that God, you know, speaks to us is He speaks to us through godly counsel. I mean, it says in Proverbs chapter eleven, verse verse fourteen, where there is no guidance, the people fall, but in the abundance of counselors, there is victory. Amen. That's why it's very important that you have right people in your life. People that will encourage you, people that will, you know, love you, people that will bring out the best in you, people that has the courage to even correct you because they are concerned and they want the best for you. You know, ako mga kapatid, I thank God for people that God brought into my life. And I will never, and I will not be where I am right now if not for them. Yes. It's all because of the Lord, because of His grace. But I believe that God will connect you to the right people. Amen. God will connect you to the right people to help you fulfill your, par- your purpose. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so, so we need to hear from God. Amen. And we, and, 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 and we need to hear from the Lord. We can hear from Him through the Word, through the Spirit and through godly counsel. And also we need to respond. Amen. First thing, the, the first, first one is they hear. The sheep, you know, he hears the voice of his shepherd. And the other one is the sheep respond to his shepherd. It means that we should give our full attention on him. And we should respond in obedience. We should respond in, in obedience. We should respond in faith and not in fear. We should respond in confidence and not doubt. We should respond in in love and not hate. We should respond in generosity and not with a stingy heart. And I believe this is the will of God for us. Amen. This is the will of God for us. We need to respond to Him. We need to respond the right way. Especially during this time of crisis. You know, when we are we are, we are faced with this pandemic, and then sometimes it's, it's it's easy to complain, right? It's easy to doubt God, but let me tell you this: God knows everything. He knows what's happening, and God He loves us and He cares for us, and He will He will He will take care of us. He will protect you, and He will protect protect me. Amen. And so the best thing to do is to respond to God in obedience and in faith. And and lastly is. The sheep, the, the sheep, they follow their shepherd. Amen. They follow the sh- their shepherd. And in our lives, you see, I believe following God is not a one-time decision. Following God is a daily choice that every day you will decide, Lord, I will follow you. Lord, I will believe in you. And whatever it is that you want me to do, I am willing to do it. Because I know you are a good, good father. You are a good God to me. And you will only lead me to a place wherein I can enjoy your grace, the abundance of your grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, now I want us to do a cross-reference. And I want us to go to Psalms 23. Because maybe there's a question in your mind. What are, the, what are the benefits of having a good shepherd? Amen? What are the benefits of having a good shepherd? And so there are three things that the good shepherd provides for us. Three things that I want to share with you. Three things 
that the Good Shepherd provides for us. Three areas that the Good Shepherd benefits to your life. So are you ready for this? All right. So number one, the Good Shepherd provides direction. The Good Shepherd provides the direction. You see, the shepherd leads and guides the sheep, the sheep. And he tells the sheep where to go. He tells the sheep, you know, where to eat and when to sleep. The sh and the sheep follows the shepherd. And the reason why the sheep needs direction is because sheep cannot live on their own. They need a shepherd that will guide them and will lead them on a daily basis. Amen. And I like it here in this story. I like how Jesus laid down his beautiful metaphor. You see, the thief, which is obviously the devil, the good shepherd, you know, that's Jesus. And, and sheep, who do you think the sheep represent? That's you and me. Amen. I know that's not sound encouraging to us, but really the reason why is sheep are probably the most dumbest animals on the planet in fact they are they are stubborn they are weak you know they have awful eyesight and and they are fearful they are fear they are fearful don't worry i'm gonna help you you know but but here the focus here is not the weakness of the ship the the the, the focus in this in this chapter is the loving shepherd, the loving and the caring shepherd. You see, the Bible says that his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. God doesn't look at your mistakes. God doesn't look at the, the, things, the things that you did wrong. God looks at your heart. And the Bible says if you are humble enough to admit that we need a savior, that we need God, then he will come to us like a shepherd. Amen. And, 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 and he will and he will redirect our life. He will, he will, he will bring us back to where we're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why, like a sheep, I believe we need a shepherd that will guide us, that will lead us. Because you know, in this world that we're living in. You know, there's a tendency. Sometimes we tend to, you know, we, we tend to do what we want without even consulting for, without even consult, consulting God first. And we tend to follow our flesh instead of following the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And that's why, and that's why, that's why, and that's where we begin to wander and lose our way. God doesn't want you to lose your way. God wants you to finish your your to finish your race with joy god wants you to fulfill your purpose here on earth and you can only know that purpose and the only one that can give you the strength and the knowledge the wisdom amen the resources everything that you need mga kapatid ay si lord lama ang makapagbibigay niyan amen hallelujah hallelujah now the bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the lord Wow, God is ordering your steps. As long as you acknowledge that, hey, God, He is my shepherd and I'm going to allow Him to lead me. I'm going to allow Him to guide me. Amen. Because He orders my steps. Amen. But that can only happen when you allow Him, you know, when you allow Him to lead you and when you surrender your will to His, to, to his will. When you surrender His will to his to to his will amen so now let's read you know let's read psalms 23 verse 1 and i'm reading from the 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 niv translation it says here the lord is my shepherd i lack nothing he makes me lay down in green pastures he leads me beside the quiet waters he refresh my soul he guides me along the paths for his name sake this is this is this is our shepherd and he will he will make he will make us lay down in green pastures and he will lead us beside the quiet waters and he will refresh our souls 
Now I like it here that it says that the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Other translation would say, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. I want you to know this, brothers and sisters. If you know that the Lord, if you know that Jesus, he is your shepherd, you have everything that you need in your life. Amen? In fact, you have everything that you need to fulfill what God has called you to do. Amen? Everything that you need is found in Jesus Christ, is found in the Lord. That's why I don't know about you, but I want Jesus, my shepherd, to be the leader of my life. I want Jesus, the shepherd of my soul, the shepherd of my life, be the one to guide me, amen, be the one to to give direction into my life. Let me tell you this. If your focus is on the Lord, if your focus is, Lord, have your way in my life. Lord, be the center of my life. Then I believe that everything in your life will become well. Amen? Will become well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the second, the second, uh, the second, the second thing that the that the good shepherd provides for us is that the good shepherd brings correction. Amen. I, I I know, you know, most of us we don't like this word. We don't like this word correction because we don't want to be corrected. Amen. In fact, we we want to do what we want to do. We want to, we want to do what you know we want you know to do. But, you know, I believe that correction is very important. And the shepherd, he brings correction to our life. You see, when the shepherd had a sheep, he has two things in his hand. One is a rod and the other one is a staff. You see, the rod, the, the shepherd used the rod to actually protect the sheep. Amen. He's protecting the sheep from, 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 from anything that's trying to harm, you know, his sheep. And so he's using that rod to protect them. But the staff, you know, the, the shepherd used the staff and the staff has a curve end, you know, so that when the sheep started to wander, look at this, the shepherd could hook the sheep around the neck to bring him back to him. Now, don't get me wrong, the hook around the neck for a moment will cause a little bit of pain. Amen? A little bit of pain. But, you know, it is necessary so that the sheep will not wander, so that the sheep will not lose his way. Amen? And let me tell you this, because it says in, Psalm, in, in verse 4 in Psalms 23, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You see, godly correction doesn't hurt you. It comforts you. Amen. Do you hear that? Godly cor correction that comes from the Lord will always build up, build, builds up, build up your life. It will, it will strengthen your life. Amen. Correction that comes from the Lord will always protect you and will always comfort you. And, and yes, your, your, our flesh may react to it. And our emotion may, you know, may, may start to feel disturbed because of the pain. But oh, when you know that it is the Lord correcting you, peace will begin to reign in your heart. You see, the Bible says, whom he loves, he corrects. Amen. And his love is not based on punishment. God will not punish you so that you, so that you, so that you will learn your mistakes. No, I believe that God, God's way of, you know, teaching us is He's using His Word. Amen. He's using His Word to teach us a lesson. God will never punish us through sickness and diseases. Amen. God will not punish us through the depressions, through fear and doubts. Amen. God will always use His Word to correct us. 
Amen? I don't know about you, but I love His Word. I love His Word. Amen? That's why the Bible, is, that's why we, we need to constantly feed on His Word. And the more you feed on His Word, the more na makikita mo yung buhay mo na magiging maayos. Amen? Hindi lang maayos kapatid, kundi patuloy ka na mananagana sa buhay mo. Amen? He is our good shepherd. Amen? He is our good shepherd. Amen? He is our good shepherd. Hallelujah. And then, and then lastly, the third, third thing that the, that the good shepherd provides for us or benefits to your life is that the good shepherd gives protection. Gives protection. It says in, in, in verse 5 and 6 in Psalms 23, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cups overflow. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to know this, brothers and sisters, that God's protection is upon you. As long as you acknowledge that Jesus, He is your, he is your shepherd, you are protected. Amen? You are protected. As the Lord being our shepherd, He will always make sure that we are protected, we are taken care of, and we are loved. Come on, come on. You know, He is more than willing he, 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 in fact, he is willing to lay down his life for you. He is willing to do everything for you because why? He loves you and he wants to. He wants to protect you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I love it that Jesus he goes even further by, by, by saying, you know, I'm not a hireling. You know, I'm not hireling the ship. I own the ship. Amen. And I know, I know them. I, I know them by name. God knows you. God knows your name. Amen. And He doesn't just know you by name, but He's actually willing to lay down His life for you and for me. You see, no one can take His life, but He is willing. He was willing to lay down His life. He was willing to give up His life for you. Amen. Amen. And because God is so powerful, God, he can, he can claim back His life. And you know, and you know, and you know, and you know what God is trying to say to us here, I believe. What He was doing here, He was actually foreshadowing the gospel. Listen to this. In the old covenant, the sheep had to die for the sheep. You see, blood sacrifice to make us right before God. But we know that that's not enough. It can only cover our sin or the sin of man for a specific period of time. Amen? So in the Old Testament, in, in the Old Covenant, the, the sheep, the lamb, had to die for the shepherd. But guess what? Under the new covenant, the shepherd dies for the sheep. Amen. The good, the awesome God lays his life down for the sheep, for his people. Amen. And he's saying to us, I'm going to protect you. Amen. I'm going to protect you from the curse of sin, of the curse of sin and death and hell. And I will stand in the cup and my blood will make you clean forever. That's our good shepherd. Amen. He will take care of us, not just for this present time that we are in, but God will take care of us. Amen. For the rest of our, our life, till eternity. Amen. Forever, God is with us and He will never leave us. And so, I believe that the shepherd, He is for us. He is not against us. And He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. Will you allow Him? Will you allow the Lord to lead you 
guide you. He is a good, good shepherd. You see, Jesus, he is, he is everything to us. You see, if Jesus is not all to you, he is nothing to you. Because I believe he is not just part of our life. He is our life. The Bible says that in him, we live and move and have our very being. He is our life. He is your life. He is my life. You know, in, in Galatians chapter 2, Galatians, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, and this is one of my life verse. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. Come on. It's no longer I who live. It is the Lord. And so I pray that in our life, every day, that we will allow Him to be the Savior of our life and to be the Lord of our life. Amen. Hallelujah. And then lastly, I want to read this verse to you before I, before I end. It says in, in Hebrew chapter 13, verse 20 to 21, it says here, Now may the God of peace who brought you who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that the great shepherd of the ship, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. For us, He is not against us. He wants the best for you and for me. And so I pray that every day, every day of our life, we will look to Him and we will hear His voice and we will respond to Him, agents, and we will follow Him. Amen. We will follow Him wherever He goes. Hallelujah. I hope you receive something. Today, I want you to know that you are blessed by God. Amen. So brothers and sisters, stay healthy and safe at home. And we will see you soon again. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord's countenance be upon you. Give you peace. I declare shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing lacking. Jesus mighty name we pray. And everyone will say Amen and Amen. God bless you.